Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1 where I am debuting my latest creation, a part mod for the Long March 3B. Also it can be Long March 3C, the only difference is that the 3B has 4 boosters and the 3C has 2. Also the 3C doesn't use these fins. But yeah, and actually you can change the texture on this part which labels it so that you can have the 3C text there too. So I'm pretty proud of this. It took a little while, longer than any of my other part mods so far. Um, the plumes could do with a little bit of work, but I'm just really bad at plumes. But little details are present. For instance, the engines on the boosters, these are liquid fuel boosters, are tilted a little bit outward. They are on the real thing as well. They're also not center on the boosters, that is true. I think I've figured out how to make fins work, so the fins are working, and we have fins. Interestingly, the engine on the boosters, on the core, and on the second stage are basically the same. Uh, the only difference is on the core, they're clustered as a unit of four, and on the second stage, there are verniers addition to the engine itself. These are the YF-20 engines and so at least as far as engine modeling was concerned it was relatively simple. Uh, the upper stage also has a longer nozzle. So After doing this I think uh, Long March 2F is pretty easy because the engines here are the same it just omits this, the third stage third stage is a hydrolock stage, a cryogenic stage. So this is Xichang, which is uh, where the Long March 3s launch from, and where they occasionally drop boosters on villages, you know. Uh, but it is very scenic with the misty mountains and everything. Interesting to note, the boosters run out only a few seconds before the core runs out on the Long March 3. So here they go. And see, they sort of separate like that. Uh, if you want them to fling out, you'll need to do something about that. Hot staging and separation. I took some extra time with these little uh, verniers. They actually rotate on a single axis only, and on the correct axis, so fortunately it's not too hard to attach them in the VAB correctly. Right now you can't really tell much because we, we don't, oh well, there you go, it started doing stuff. Basically, I sort of uh, took my cue from Raider Nix mods as far as the little verniers were concerned. I didn't go whole hog on the engine modeling. Uh, it could be a lot better. There were a lot of wires all around, lots of little bits <laughs> I don't understand half the time. So I, I, I did what I could, but I didn't want to go over. Frankly, there weren't enough images for me to get a real sense of where everything was anyway. The Chinese don't exactly produce volumes of images of their engines. I haven't put any textures on limited shininess. Oh, I can separate the fairings now, probably. I don't know exactly when they separate the fairings. Now, the load we're carrying here is 5.5 tons, which is its geosynchronous transfer orbit payload. And of course the reason I decided to do the Long March 3B was because they today launched a uh, lunar lander and rover to the far side of the moon. And I look forward to modeling the lander and rover as well. Maybe I'll get those done by the time they actually reach the moon. Maybe I do not have enough time, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see whether I can manage that or not. The plumes are an issue here too, uh, especially the little vernier plumes seem to be a bit too high, but every way I try to move them doesn't seem to work very well. Ok, 
Okay. And this is a stage with two Hydrolox engines. These are the YF-75s. Also used on Long March 5 on its upper stage. And since we've got a geosync payload, it'll of course stop with about 3,000 meters per second left. Really, it can transfer this payload over to the moon too. I think that might be because the fairings are too light or something else might be a little bit light. I did not put any so RCS on here. I don't know if they're supposed to be. On the images that I saw of the stage, I did not see any, but I think I only had like three images of the stage. So there were some other images of the engine section, but of the stage in particular, I didn't have too much to work with. Logically speaking, it probably ought to have RCS, especially for, you know, geosynchronous transfer orbits so that I can sell the fuel down and relight. I gave them two ignitions only. I don't know how many they're supposed to have. They're fairly modest engines. Hydrolox 438 seconds of ISP is probably underdoing it. And 78 kilonewtons, basically they're RL10s. So this is my first full rocket mod, full launcher. I had done the Pegasus and Launcher 1. But um, I'm looking for launchers that we don't have good models of. You know, everybody's done Saturn V and all that. Um, and at least in KSP 1.3.1, I've got DECU's space shuttle working, and I think there's an updated version of it for more recent uh, KSPs. So basically, I'm looking for stuff to fill and of course with uh, the Chinese launching a lunar lander and rover this weekend I thought this would be important and timely but I'm also looking at GSLV Mark 3 and um, and we'll see what else that uh, there aren't good mods for or at least I don't know of if you do know that there is a good mod for let's say GSLV Mark 3 I saw a GSLV Mark II around, so I'll hold off on that. And I know a PSLV, I think, is from real scale boosters. Possibly the GSLV Mark II is as well. So, after demonstrating that this can get to orbit properly with uh, the appropriate amount of fuel given the payload, uh, we are going to go to the VAB and I'll tell you how to put it together. Uh, you'll note that I didn't make the fairing for it, and that's because there are a lot of different kinds of fairings for it. So, so yeah, a procedural fairings are probably a good bet. The fairing size is 4 meters, so the max diameter is 4 meters, and you can work off of that. The tank base is 3 meters. I did start to make a fairing, but... I just couldn't figure out which one, and I wasn't getting the shape quite right anyway. Okay, there we are in orbit. Really, we have enough to transfer over to the moon right now. But, alright. Let's go to the VAB and take a look at it in detail. Okay, so to find the parts, just type Long March. And if you're using it in stock, I did test it in stock. And it's pretty powerful as you might imagine I think it I think it managed more than 30 tons to orbit uh, I sized it smaller for stock uh, I size it to 75 percent which means that it'll be um, it'll be a 2.5 meter base tank size the upper stage is less than 2.5 meters though so otherwise in realism overhaul it's 3.35 meters Anyway, but uh, we'll start, well, let's, let's start with a procedural fairing. So let me get some sort of payload for it. Well, why don't I just put my own Osiris Rex? 
We want this base and it so happens to default to the right size, 3 meters. Now as far as fairings are concerned, the one I used uh, came with main sailor pack I believe and it's the Soyuz white and what we want is a max size, actually this should be 3.75 because that's the interior and then the cycle start should be 1.5 meters and then the cycle end varies but basically it looks like this and then we get the parts that I made so third stage tank and then the third stage engines which is the YF75 again I haven't done too much by way of textures for these uh, you'll see a little bit of piping that's the what you call it, um, exhaust from the turbo pump. Uh, those should be on the inside. And so this one I'll alter, uh, rotate like that. Okay. And then the second stage decoupler. And this has the collider on the bottom. There's no other collider, so it's just at the bottom here. And then the second stage tank. And then the second stage engine, which is just the YF-20. There are variants of the YF-20, but um, this is for the uh, Long March 3B Extended, or E, which is the type that's currently flying. And on this tank, you can change between the B and E. Just click Change Texture, assuming you have the right plugin for that. I honestly don't know which. Pl I think it's Fire Spitter, but I'm not sure because it might be... Uh, BD something as well or a BD version of fire spitter so um, yeah <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see so C is for two boosters B is for four there is an A version with no boosters but that has a smaller core it's not extended so this doesn't cover that right now okay this is the vernier and the vernier can only attach the right way and that's because it's actually got the node on the side of it. Now let me zoom in so you can see. The node is actually on the side of it, so that instead of the top, so that it can only attach in the right direction. If I rotate it any other way, it's not going to attach to this one because that will be the wrong way for it to attach. It will only attach the right way. And actually, we want to do two-way symmetry. So two-way symmetry there and we rotate once and then do two-way two symmetry there and then we've got our verniers okay and then the bottom stage the bottom stage includes uh, unfortunately the the center is down here I probably should reconsider that but anyway um, the shroud is act actually goes with uh, the first stage here and of course we've got the hot staging grill hello Oop, there we go and this actually needs to be rotated like this the piping on the side should line up on all three stages you'll note that the second stage sort of looks stubby it's actually shorter than the third stage and that's because its propellants are denser. The thir uh, third stage is cryogenic propellant. Uh, takes up more space. So that's the first stage. Sorry, my uh, post-processing gives a little bit of a ghosting effect. So you might notice that. First stage engines is this YF-21. Most of the model is going to be hidden. But I made the rest of the model just in case you wanted it <laughs> or just in case I have it for other purposes. Anyway, this engine here is just the same as the second stage engine up here with a shorter nozzle. So it wasn't that hard. One difference it has is that it also has a bigger um, turbo pump exhaust. I don't know why. I don't know why the second stage one has... Oh, I actually, I take that back. I, I probably know, know why the second stage one has smaller turbo pump exhaust. And that's because the stuff is probably going through the verniers. Maybe. 
Okay, so here's the basic deal. And then the boosters, we have a decoupler. And this goes on two-way symmetry because we've got we're going to have two different sets of boosters and of course it's important that you can attach two at a time so you can have the two booster version. So we've got those and again the core has little nodes for you to attach them to and then the Long March 3 booster two at a time. If you only have two this is the way it goes. The stripes line up the bottom doesn't. That's just how it is. And again, if you want it to uh, sort of tilt off, you might want to add separatrons, but I couldn't do that because a separatron, uh, building in a separatron is basically the same as an engine, and it really can only have one engine. And this had to be embedded in it because it has a particular tilt to it and particular placement, and I just didn't want to fiddle with it. So I decided it'd be best if we just have those as part of the booster instead. And there you have it. Oh wait, the fins. The fins only go on if it's the four booster version. If it's the two booster version, it doesn't. I don't know what I've done wrong that they start out on this orientation, but But yeah, there we go. Let me uh, take it out to the launch pad to check that the fins actually tilt properly. I think I have not done that test yet. I mean, it was controlling the rocket, but actually I've given these uh, these this engine a little bit of gimbal. I think I actually gave these a little bit of gimbal too, just one degree. Also, it occurs to me that since there are no fins on the two booster version, either the core is really good at gimbling or yeah, it's a, that, that's a good question. I certainly have no data saying that they don't gimbal, so. Uh, oh right, the Osiris Rex had that problem where it automatically starts the engine all the time. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, that looks right. That looks right for pitch. Roll. Excellent. So everything checks out, and with that, I'll leave it be. Hopefully, I'll get to use it to launch the lander and rover to the moon sometime in the next few days, but that requires a little bit of work on my part. Uh, hopefully, you'll enjoy this model of the Long March 3B and 3C. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.